Ipswich Town have certainly got tongues wagging with their transfer business so far this summer, haven't they? Town are in a pretty unique position. They have gone from League One to Championship to Premier League in consecutive seasons. And now, all of a sudden, they need to build a squad to compete, attack, stroke, survive up in the Premier League. And they've pretty much got one summer to do it. They've certainly gone for it. It's certainly been busy, but it's been too busy, too big a spend, too many players in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, but do me a favour, hear out what I've got to say first, and then uh, we'll give you that call to action once again at the end of the video. So look, have Ipswich signed too many players? Well, shall we look at who's been signed so far at time of recording? Hutchinson, Greaves, Delap, Clark. O'Shea, Smodix, Murich, Ogbene, Keuste, Townsend, Johnson and Phillips. So at time of recording, that is 12. And I suppose it was the Ogbene sign-in that prompted me to make this video, actually, because I kind of retweeted it and said, what do you think? And got some pretty interesting comments. We've got the usual kind of dross and emotional and defensive and attacking stuff that you do get on Twitter. But... In amongst all that sewage, there was some really interesting comments that has compelled me to try and answer this question. We've signed too many players. That question specifically, I think we can answer fairly well quickly. Well, let me ask a different question. Do you really want to be signing 12 players or more in a transfer window? No, of course you don't. In an ideal world, you want a minimal squad churn, three or four in, three or four out. Each window, each summer spread, you know, maybe incorporating the January windows as well. But sometimes needs must. And I remember the Forest fans trying to explain this when all of the outside world was saying, you're signing too many players. And there's a little bit of a sense of, well, what else do you want to do? In the, in the Forest instance, it was a team that was built on loan players that had been sort of promoted double quick by Steve Cooper, having just arrived in the summer and as I said a minute ago you all of a sudden have to build a Premier League squad. Ipswich have uh, a, a similar but different um, kind of scenario where you know they went up from League One and probably would have been expecting you know to build in the Championship over well you tell me three four seasons but they went straight through the damn thing and very similar to Forest now they're probably not like for example, a Brentford who very brilliantly over probably eight or ten transfer windows gradually improved their team, improved their squad, spent a little bit more, raised a little bit more. And it kind of went like that rather than like that, which maybe for Ipswich and Forest it's done. So look, have they signed too many players? Probably. But what else are they going to do? Um, and we did get plenty of comments saying, oh, what about the team that got you there, Ben? Well, I'm sure those same commenters, if Ipswich are bottom of the league, having not signed anyone in 10 games time, uh, would be saying, oh, they didn't sign anybody in activity. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? So have they signed too many players? Probably. But my counter to that is, what else are you going to do having got double promotions? Um, it's not just the number of players, though. It is... The profile of, I hate that word, but I'm going to throw it in. The profile of signing, who have they signed? Well, um, if we boil this down, there's one free transfer in there, Ben Johnson. And then two loans, Calvin Phillips and Jens Keuste. And I suppose if you're going to do the loan thing, you need to do that on players that you couldn't afford to buy. And frankly, that, you know, can go if you get relegated or if they do really well, they're obviously going to, you know, go and be sold by their by their parent club or what have you. But it was needed to address central midfield and, you know, a 25-year-old, 28-year-old, two international midfield players. I think if you're going to use your two loans, do it that way. Um, there's two players in from big academies, Liam Delap and Amari Hutchinson. Um, the naysayers will say, well, they're not proven at Premier League level. Well, yeah, that's true what you're going to do. But I think on the positive side, you take very young players and, you know, bring them into the Premier League world. If they thrive, their value goes up. If they're kind of, you know, struggle a little bit and you do go down, well, in theory, 
they should both be all right in the championship, you know. And obviously there is the third scenario of a complete bust, but let's hope that that is not going to be the case. Um, you've got three from relegated teams and three from the championship. And these are the ones that get the most negative comments, I guess. You know, why are you signing players that just got relegated? Why are you signing players from the championship? So um, O'Shea, Muric and Ogbené have all come from teams that got relegated last season. Uh, Smodic, Greaves and Clark have all come from the championship. In terms of the relegated um, players, I get the argument why are you signing relegated players. But in this weird stasis kind of in between the Premier League and the championship where that massive gap occurs there is this kind of market for players that are traded between top Premier League clubs and bottom championship clubs and again uh, sorry bottom Premier League clubs and top championship clubs you knew what I meant um, and again I would raise well who else are you going to sign because players signed by mid-table um, Premier League clubs tend to cost 30 to 40 to 50 million pounds and 80 to 150 thousand pounds a week in in salary, it's just really not plausible for promoted teams. Yes, championship all-stars, we get that accusation. But what I'll say about the championship players is look at the three they have signed. Smodics was the top scorer in the entire division. Go figure. Greaves, young, left-footed, English centre-back. You know, always tend to go well, those type of players. And Clark was fantastic for Sunderland pretty much until injury and um, a bit of a managerial vacuum occurred up in the northeast there so who are the players i don't know i think that's a pretty good balance and i mean look you suggest names of better players that Ipswich could have got i think the balance is all right when you look at the freeze the loans the big academies uh, relegated teams uh, three from the championship i get the argument proven premier league player but again in the situation we're in now with the massive cliff edge in revenue between Premier League and Championship. Is it even possible for a promoted team to go and sign a, quote, proven Premier League player who's 26 and who's got 100 Premier League appearances? Is that possible with the revenues and with FFP and PNS? You tell me. So, look, let's try and get to the bottom of this. Um, have Ipswich signed too many players? Well, I've answered that probably. But what else are they going to do? You know, ride out a squad that was built in League One in the big league and probably get relegated. That did not go down well. At, you know, say the likes of Norwich and Sheffield United who haven't really pushed the boat out quite as much as other teams have. Um, have they paid too much? Well, you can only really judge that afterwards, can't you? Because again, given the cliff edge between EFL and Premier League money, basically any signing that keeps you in there unless you have spent an astronomical amount of money, and we're talking tens of millions, um, it's probably worthwhile. Yes, probably some you'd look and say, oh, that could have been cheaper. And then others, you think, OK, that might be a bit of a bargain in the context of the ridiculous transfer fees paid for football players. Um, in terms of quality, well, we'll find out, won't we? If the question is, can these players get survival for Ipswich? Well, We'll find out. I think it might be touch and go and we're looking for an overperformance from the manager. Again, I will say, who else? Who else would you bring in? Name names. If they're, if they're not good enough, name names of who could realistically have come in. And I think on the other side of it, is it about survival or is it about a long-term picture? And no one can argue that Ipswich haven't upgraded their squad. And the question then I would ask, ask to you is, is it realistic for a championship club, especially one that's gone back-to-back -back promotions, to upgrade their squad, tick that box, and make it survival ready? I don't know whether it is. And in the long term, do you want a better squad and not completely, you know, go into financial meltdown? Which, looking at the ages of the players and the possible resale value and the loans should be all right, given they can make some sales next summer if they do go down, then, you know, is there any other option than rolling the dice in this type of way? I've put in the thumbnail, brave or stupid. If we're agreeing that 12 is too many in an ideal world, you don't want to sign that many. Brave or stupid? Well, definitely brave. You know, I think the, um, the worst decision you can make in life sometimes is no decision. It would have been a hell of a gamble just to roll with 
the squad built in League One that got out of the Championship. So brave, I think yes. Stupid, we'll find out, won't we? If they and that's binary, isn't it? If they go down, everyone will say the business is bad. If they stay up, everyone will say it's good. But there is a scenario where even if they do go down, the squad building and the ability to bounce back and the value added to the squad compared to what they're going to be up against. And, you know, if they then came back, the gap might be smaller. So, you know, maybe it's not as binary as we all think. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments then on Ipswich Town's transfer business. Have they signed too many players? Um, will it be enough to keep them up and... Is that even a fair question to be asking of a promoted side now, especially one that's gone back to back and was in League One two seasons ago? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now, judging by the, um, you know, like the retweet I mentioned of the old Ben A sign and some of the comments in that, um, we will get some extremes in the comments here. So if you can try and avoid, if you're an Ipswich fan, on the one hand, toxic positivity, and anyone even daring to ask the question that this might not work out is getting shouted down. Come on, not all transfers work out and there's no guarantee this will work out. But I get why, like me, if you're an Ipswich fan, why you would defend the club. On the other hand, let's try and avoid the toxic negativity if you really, really desperately want Ipswich to get relegated, fall flat on their face for whatever reason. And that will make you happy in your heart and that will make your life meaningful. And you want to, you know, put negative, condescending comments about how this is all going to be a train wreck, even though you don't really know that because nobody can see the future. Then, you know, fine, whatever. But I would much prefer an interesting debate. I've tried to do it here. Um, and I think the debate, moreover, is what would you do? A, if you were a promoted team. B, if you're a double promoted team. What do you do, given the cliff edges and given the challenges of competing in the Premier League, but complying with FFP, PNS, and all that good stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Ipswich Town's transfer business, whatever you conclude, it's certainly not been boring, has it?